As Donald Trump sat in a New York courtroom in his 2016 election interference trial, one of his other legal teams was in Washington, D.C., arguing before the Supreme Court that he should have immunity from his 2020 election interference case. Now, as uh, we said last night on our special uh, program last night, the arguments were frankly shocking. Many legal observers, people I know personally who, who are who no illusions about this court, genuinely taken aback by the fact that conservative justices seem to be almost openly colluding with Donald Trump, reconceptualizing the president in real time as a sort of lawless dictator and just ignoring all the constitutional, textual, historical evidence that points in the other direction. To my mind, one of the most galling things, uh, and it didn't get mentioned yesterday during oral arguments, but it's, it's worth mentioning here, is that during Donald Trump's own impeachment trial for this very matter, his attempts to overturn the election, his own lawyer, before the nation and before the Senate, argued the literal opposite of what his lawyer is now arguing to the Supreme Court. The uh, senator from Texas's question raises a very, very important point. There is no such thing as a January exception to impeachment. There is only the text of the Constitution which makes very clear that a former president is subject to criminal sanction after his presidency for any illegal acts he commits. You did not hallucinate that. That was Donald Trump's lawyer in the Senate saying the following. The text of the Constitution makes very clear that a former president is subject to criminal sanction after his presidency for any legal, illegal acts he commits. That was the argument Trump's lawyers used in 2021 to help avoid conviction in the Senate. Don't worry, you can vote to acquit him, and we all still know because it's obvious that he could face criminal sanctions. Now, his lawyers across the street in the Supreme Court three years later are making literally the opposite argument to a receptive Supreme Court. As Jamel Bowie put it in the New York Times, Trump has asked the Supreme Court if he is, in effect, a king, and at least four members of the court, among them the so-called originalists, have said, in essence, they'll have to think about it. Jamel Bowie, opinion columnist for the New York Times, joins me now. Jamel, I loved your column today. I thought it was uh, really fa fantastic work. Um, one of the things I liked about it was all the historical evidence you entered um, which was bizarrely absent from all the originalists. I mean, you got Trump's lawyer clinging like a life raft to one Ben Franklin quote, which he keeps throwing out there every time, when there's just an enormous corpus of writing from folks who were actually at the Constitutional Convention, who were at state conventions saying, early Supreme Court justice saying, like, obviously the president's not immune. Right. Yeah, I, I pulled that from the great historian's brief, kind of a, a collection of really, uh, you know, excellent historians put together a brief with the Brennan Center, basically like kind of laying out here is all the evidence against the claim that the president is sort of criminally immune. But on, to be completely honest with you, even doing that feels like an extra, like a silly exercise yes. to some extent, because because it's just, to me at least, self-evident that the president is criminally liable for illegal acts. Like a president, if a, pre a president who has criminal immunity, so the president is a civil officer under the constitution, if that person's criminal immunity, they are no longer a president by definition. They, they are a king, they are some other thing that stands above the entire system, but they're not a president. And so it's just sort of like system breaking to suppose that the president is above the law in any in any sense, and so you can marshal all of this historical evidence. And I, I do think it's worth doing. It's worth showing in detail, right? That the people who constructed this thing thought a lot about this specific question and gave us pretty straightforward answers that don't really require any interpretation. But I also think it's worth saying that listen, by definition, the president has to be right. legally accountable. Yeah, this really is a kind of go with your gut situation. <laughs> like, what is your intuition <laughs> about this? is correct as an American, as, a, you know, the, we threw off the, the tyranny of the monarch, like no one is above the law. Like that is correct. And that's what the lower courts found. The other way I agree with you that it's, it feels like shadow boxing is, and this I think was what was so appalling about the arguments yesterday, is they don't, it, it feels like the, 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 the fix is in, <laughs> that, the, that it's, it's cooked, 
you know, that they don't, they're not really listening uh, or, 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 or reasoning legally. What they're doing is trying to find an out for him. Right. Right. I mean, I think the, the, the big the big tell, the giveaway, that they refuse to deal with the facts in question. Right. They refuse to deal with the actual situation yes. that we're facing. They, they're spinning these hypotheticals. Well, what if president, you know, is afraid of being prosecuted and then they're going to stay in office? It's like, OK, yeah, what if? But, but like what actually happened is that the president that was defeated in an election and then refused to leave and summon a mob to overturn the, the process by which he is supposed to lead. And that wasn't because he was afraid of prosecution. If Donald Trump had just like went gently off into the night after losing, he could still run for real run again. Like no one would no one yeah. would care, right? There wouldn't be a prosecution. This is happening because he tried to overturn the process. And so this isn't some sort of vengeful, you know, Biden, some vengeful Justice Department going after Trump because he signed some bills they didn't like. It's because he 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 did something genuinely transgressive and system threatening. And the fact that the court just decided that this didn't matter. We're going to talk about abstractions and hypotheticals like this is a law school class is I think you're right. It, it is the tell. It is telling us yeah. that the fix is in. That they that they're just trying to find a way to not have to come down hard on Trump. I also thought it also felt a little bit like I was in a in a sort of like lefty postmodern undergrad classroom where like you know they're 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 sort of like well who do, what president doesn't break the law they're all crooks really it's like really really is that is that the position of the U.S. Supreme Court like aren't they all crooks like I, I don't know I don't know that that's not what I thought you would think. Um, the, the last thing here just briefly is I think you and I share the. Part of what was upsetting, too, is that th this isn't over yet, and I'm worried about this court, like deathly worried about what they have set up for us in the future. Right. Um, you know, at, at the very least, they've delayed they delayed a the trial. The trial will be delayed. The public will not be able to get a sense. Um, no, the, if a jury of citizens, right, decides that Trump is, is guilty here, which I think is important information for the public to know. And it's also, you know, Trump could win in November, and it's setting up a constitutional crisis, right? It's setting up a situation in which Trump kills and tries to kill the investigation. Yep. And that, then, then we're entering a whole new, a whole new chapter of American history in, in a bad way. Jamel Bowie, as always. Thank you, sir.